So I, I interviewed Ian about nine years ago now. I, I, I checked the date actually shortly before this. And I, I, of course, asked about your uh, you no longer being with the band, which it was a little more recent at the time. And he said that he had long been encouraging you to kind of do your own thing. You had interest in doing that. Uh, so you guys talked about it and, and he just gave you his blessing and, and you were going to go do your own thing. Uh, your side of the story seems to be a, a, a little different. I, I know it's not your favorite topic in the world, and understandably so, but but I was wondering if you could give me your side of it. Yeah, well, I think it's very unfair to, to put that story about because it's totally untrue. Um, and, you know, I love Ian. I wish him all the best in everything he does. He's a very talented musician and a, an amazing songwriter. And, and I my life is partly dedicated to keeping the brand of Jethro Tull alive, but that never happened. Uh, I was never encouraged uh, by anybody other than myself to do my own um, projects, which I did whenever there was time available. But um, no, it, it, I got no help at all. I got no um, support from the record label, from any of the agents we work with, from any of the promotion um promoters it, the, the door was closed on me and uh n not just by ian but by everybody to do with jethro cell so it was very very upsetting and, and it, I, i'm a survivor i'm a fighter and uh m maybe another person would have just said you know what, i'm gonna retire but no <laughs> that's not me so i, I everything i did was from scratch and i literally had to beg borrow steal gigs uh, on my knees to promoters give me a chance and they weren't interested because they just want jethro toll they didn't even want you know uh, the ian's solo project it, it's um famously a, um, a diluted product you know mick jagger does a solo tour he'll sell there were hundreds of the tickets that the Stones would do. It, it, it's it's uh, well documented. So it, it's uh, it, I really had my back against all, but I promise you, I got no help from anybody. So, is it fair to say that that leaving Jethro Tull was not your choice? No, it was not my choice at all. Uh, Ian, we were doing an American tour. And, and it was a very strange atmosphere. And the reason was because he was planning all these projects, including Thick as a Brick, without talking to me or Don, the drummer. And we thought, well, and naively, I thought, well, he, he knows I can play it at the drop of a hat, so he doesn't need to talk to me about it. Um, but essentially, he was planning beyond this day when he, when he sat me and Don down in a, a hotel and he said, um, I'm... I'm finishing Jethro Tull. The group won't exist. I'm fed up of the rock audiences, the noise. I just want to do my own thing. Maybe one day I'll start it again. But he said, uh, I've had enough and uh, and I'm finishing. I'm not going to play Jethro Tull shows anymore. And that was it. <laughs> that was the end. So, I mean, and it's people can... Uh, but, but I don't have any burden from from any of that. But but it was a very one sided decision. I was never part of of any plan, it, it, and neither was Doan. Um, so we we were just you know the the, the rug was pulled from under our feet, and uh, that's what happened.